Welcome back to 3 and Out here on the Southern Pigskin Radio Network. We are presented by Bill Lucas Insurance. Call Star Star. Enroll me today to get a custom plan tailored to fit you. And the Bulldogs of Georgia coming off a tough defeat uh, to the Florida Gators. They get ready to go on the road at Kentucky this weekend. And joining us on the program from Bulldog Illustrated, Murray Poole stops by here on 3 and Out. Murray, good afternoon. How are you? Good, Kevin. How y'all doing? Doing very good. Uh, you told me last week, you said this will be 53 Georgia Florida's in a row for me. And anybody that says they know how this thing's going to turn out is kind of fooling themselves. But did you expect what you saw on Saturday? No, I sure didn't. You know, Kevin, I thought the, the perfect storm might be brewing for the Gators. They could win, you know, fighting for Coach Muschamp and, and you know, just do to put together a good game, you know. And uh, But, uh, you know, so I knew, I told everybody it wouldn't be a blowout. You know, I've seen this series for so long, like you say. And, uh, but uh, neither did I think uh, Georgia simply wouldn't show up after the first quarter. And uh, and I, I think the best word to use that game is inexplicable, Kevin. Uh, it's uh, just it's hard to believe you saw what happened, but – I think it was a case of Georgia coming off two high emotional performances on the road and, and, and got into their heads just like the fans were believing. This wasn't going to be very much of a game. The Gators struggled. They're no good, blah, blah. And it just set up perfectly in Florida. And I thought, uh, you know, they simplified their game plan. Uh, you know, with Harris at quarterback, it just ran the football down Georgia's throat. And Georgia especially couldn't adapt on that edge. And they just gassed them all day, Kevin. And, and, and a close game in the first quarter got out of hand for the Bulldogs. And, Murray, moving forward here, Georgia has a pretty good Kentucky team in Lexington on Saturday. What's the mindset in the locker room for the Bulldogs as they get ready for the Cats? Well, I'd be surprised, B.J., if they don't come out with an edge and kind of mad like they were when they went to uh, Missouri and, and Arkansas. Uh, maybe not for the same reasons. For the same reasons, they were. They said they were simply embarrassed then in Jacksonville last weekend. And, and I think they want to do something about it, and they're going to have to do something about it against, as you all know, a very good Kentucky team at Played Mississippi State off their feet uh, in Lexington. They're five and one at home, and uh, and they're kind of hungry too. They lost three in a row and uh, trying to make a bowl. So uh, I think Georgia's going to have its hands full. But I, I'll be surprised if the Bulldogs didn't come out with that mindset, knowing they've got to win to stay in the SEC race and and play well uh, tomorrow in Lexington. Murray, I know that uh, some people may be looking at this matchup with Kentucky and saying, "Well, hey, at least the Wildcats aren't a physical, pounded out football team like Florida," but. Georgia has also had its struggles in the secondaries against the pass. Uh, do you think that Kentucky will present some major problems for this Georgia defense once again? Yeah, I think so, Matt. Uh, you know, uh, this Patrick Tolles, you know, I was really impressed with him when I saw him against Mississippi State. You know, he took it to him all day, threw for about 390 yards, ran for close to 100 despite being sacked seven times. And, you know, he's just a big physical 6'5", 238 quarterback, and, they're going to have to count for him, uh, you know, he can keep him off uh, balance, you know, running and throwing. And, and they don't have the big receivers like some of the receivers Georgia's faced in, in the past three or four games, but they've got a lot of jitterbugs, the way I call them. You know, uh, certainly uh, Ryan Timmons, uh, Javis Blue, their leading receiver last year, and DeMarco Robinson. Robinson uh, all those guys are capable of getting open. They've got a lot of quickness and speed. So uh, a different type of receiver the Bulldogs are facing tomorrow in Lexington. And, and yeah, I'm sure, uh, Matt, that, the Cats are going to really come at them and try to exploit their secondary. But first of all, I think they're going to see what uh, the Gators did and see if they can run on the, run on them with JoJo Kemp and Braylon Hurd and Toes keeping the ball. So uh, it's going to be an interesting game, uh, the matchups, whichever way the Wildcats choose to attack the Georgia defense. And, Murray, that seems to be where the matchup lies. I mean, you look at the, the Georgia offense a week ago and people look at the scoreboard and what Florida did offensively. Hudson Mason over 300 yards throwing the ball. Nick Chubb, 170 some odd yards running the football. What offensively do they need to clean up going into this Kentucky game? Well, uh, you know, guys, if you know, of course you watch the Florida game, you know, you know that uh, Nick Chubb carried it 14 times in the first quarter for 101 yards, and I, and I don't know why he just uh, touched the ball seven more times the rest of the game. Of course, he had a costly fumble after his 35 yard run. It kind of took Georgia out of the game, but you know, I just believe if they stay with the run more, Kevin, uh, with him off tackle, uh, the toss sweep, which they didn't run all day, Harley, uh, you know, they could have moved the ball, but I think they, once they got behind by a couple of touchdowns, they got in a desperation mode and tried to put it in Hudson Mason's hands. And yeah, he threw for 319 yards, but it was a, a very quiet 319. He was in desperation mode, throwing the whole second half, uh, trying to catch up when, uh, it was too little and too far out of reach. So, uh, 
I think they're going to attack him. The good thing, I, you know, we don't know if he's going to play, but certainly if Sonny Michelle comes back, Coach Rick and, and Bobo and also they, he's looked good in practice, and I think he's got the okay to go. Uh, there again, you just don't know, though. We've seen, like Justin Scott Wesley, we were expecting him to play for three or four weeks. He's, yet to, he's gotten in, but hadn't caught a pass. So, yeah, but if uh, Sonny Michelle can get in and spell Nick Chubb, give him some relief, I think you, with his breakaway ability, you're going to see uh, two pretty good backs uh, carrying the football and uh, – and I think at the same time they want Hudson Mason maybe not throw 300. When they throw 300, they usually lose the football game because they're not running the ball enough. So I think you're going to see the balance with those two backs and, and Mason, you know, going back to what he did earlier, passing for maybe 180, 190 yards and, and balancing that running game to the uh, sticks moving that way, Kevin. It seems like every time Georgia loses, people now are, are, are very upset with Mark Richt. What are your thoughts on kind of the job he's done this year, Murray, and, and maybe what the response from Georgia's fan base has been in regards to that job this year? Well, I think, you know, that everybody was pleased with the job he was doing, you know, with a new defensive, uh, uh, you know, sort of new defensive coordinator and bringing him along. Uh, you know, Jeremy Pruitt's got him coming along, certainly looked outstanding in the two games on the road in Missouri and Arkansas, and, and the running game coming on and especially losing, you know, the number one player in America is running back anyway, and, and Todd Gurley and missing him for four games and still not missing a beat when he went on the road and played so well. I think, you know, they're giving him a good coaching job, but it doesn't take but one game, as you guys know, to, to, send, a, uh, to send him out the other way, especially the guys that, uh, you know, always think uh, Coach Rick can't win the big one, can't win the national championship, uh, you know. So uh, but I, I've heard some good things this, this week that I agree with. Uh, one, I think you guys interviewed Shane Matthews, and he said he – can't get over his fan base, ranked eight in the coaches' poll last week, the week before Florida, and, and then they uh, lose a game and everybody wants to get rid of the whole staff. And also, I like if they're holding on a national championship, if he hadn't won last year, that's the big thing. I think the guys that are against Coach Rick uh, hold him over the head. Uh, you know, they look around, like you say, Auburn's won in Alabama, you know, Florida, uh, you know, everybody around them, and they, they want that national championship. But, uh, you know, let's hold on a minute because uh, – you know, Coach Rick's been there 14 years, guys. Uh, it took Vance nearly 17 years to win a national championship, and that's because of the number 34 coming on the campus in the early 80s. It took Bobby Bowden 19 years at Florida State to win his first. So I still think Coach Rick's capable of winning a national championship, especially with Pruitt building his defense up. But, you know, you can't have these inexplicable games once a year. And, and uh, you know, pointing out this is a 9 3 year, Georgia's lost a game by 15 points or more. So, you know, uh, some motion both ways. They just need to come back. They'll beat Kentucky. If they lose to Kentucky and Auburn, uh, it's really going to get ugly and happen to, uh, you know, with the, uh, the armchair quarterbacks attacking everybody in the, in the university and Coach Rick, especially in his staff. And uh, so hopefully they can uh, turn it around and get going again. Murray, finally, right now, how do you feel about Georgia's chances in the East? I still like them pretty well. That's a big game tomorrow. I really, guys, I think they can beat the Auburn Tigers. I think they can play well. There's two things happening here with Auburn. It's going, it looks like it's going to be a night game unless Alabama gets upset and CBS takes the, uh, you know, the Georgia Auburn game for 3:30. But I don't think that's probably going to happen. So a night game. The, the stadium is going to be electric. Really, it's going to be returning. And also, Nick, Ch- or Nick Marshall is returning to Athens, and it might not be pleasant for him. The first time coming back to Athens since he left school there, just like uh, Zach Megberg got the royal treatment when he came and, and Georgia beat LSU. So I really think it'll be a different Georgia football team at home if they get to Auburn after a win over Kentucky. So I kind of like their chances there. A, a ball game could go either way with the Auburn Tigers, just like Georgia Auburn's all you got to say. It's going to be a close hard fall ball game. Uh, I like their chances, uh, Matt, again, to your question, if they can come out of the bluegrass and not get uh, tripped up there again tomorrow. Murray Poole, Bulldog Illustrated, has been our guest here on uh, 3 and Out. Murray, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. I always enjoy it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Murray Poole, Bulldog Illustrated, our guest here on 3 and Out on the Southern Pigskin Radio Network. As again, we count you down towards high school game day fueled by Enmark ECI at Calvary Day School coming up. And we're going to be registering folks to win for Chick-fil-A for a year. We'll have our Chick-fil-A Savannah game predictions coming up momentarily as well. So stick around. Glad you're with us here on this Friday afternoon. 
Three and Out presented by Bill Lucas Insurance. Call Star Star. Enroll me today to get a custom plan tailored to fit your needs. Star Star. Enroll me for Bill Lucas Insurance. This is Three and Out here on the Southern Pigskin Radio Network. We're online at ESPNCoastal.com and on the ESPN radio app. Chick-fil-A Savannah Game Predictions coming up next.